am finally testing out the Milani Conceal and Perfect Cream to Powder Foundation. So this went super viral on TikTok. I think it's an online only item at Ulta and for the longest time, all of the shades that looked relatively close to my skin tone were sold out. Luckily the brand came through, they sent me this, hopefully it's in my shade and I will be trying it for the first time today. So we're gonna get straight into that, but first if you're new here, hi my name is Miranda, welcome to my channel where we talk all things budget beauty. If that sounds interesting to you, then become the newest member of the Slashed Squad by hitting subscribe and the bell icon. All right, so a couple details before we put this on my face. So this is supposed to be a light diffusing, buildable full coverage foundation with with a soft matte finish. A lot of people have been comparing it to that viral Kat Von D Apple foundation. I've never tried it, but side by side, they do look pretty similar in the TikToks that I've seen. It contains antioxidant rich vitamins A and E plus green tea, and it's available in 22 shades if you can find them. It is $10.99, which I'm actually pretty happy about because as I've spoken about recently, a lot of drugstore foundation prices are on the rise and I think $10.99 is still pretty reasonable. So let me zoom you in and we'll put this on. All right, so I prepped my skin with my vitamin C serum and my moisturizer, but I'm not using primer. I really wanna test the potential of the foundation alone. And we're definitely gonna be testing coverage today because we got stuff to cover. <laughs> now the shade I will be testing is 220 in Creamy Natural. I did use the online shade finder that Milani has on its website to try to match me correctly, so. Here goes nothing. And I'm using my Real Techniques Expert Face Brush for this application. Whoa, whoa. Did I color match like perfectly? <laughs> okay, so right off the bat, I've obviously I haven't blended this out yet or anything, but a lot of coverage. I really hope this doesn't oxidize because if I remember correctly, their Conceal and Perfect foundation that comes in the bottle oxidizes pretty drastically. Okay, so just with that one dip of the brush, I'm actually able to spread the foundation pretty far. At first I was just concentrating it over where I needed the coverage the most, but I've been able to kind of pull it to the other side of my face without much issue. I also don't need as much coverage on this side though. So the Real Techniques brush I think is doing pretty well and I'm not seeing much streakiness at all. I still need to blend a little bit. Okay, now that I've blended it out, it's looking really smooth. There's no streakiness at all or patchiness anywhere. And I do have combo skin. Even over my blemishes, at least with this first layer, it's not catching on the raised texture of my skin. So that's good news. I do wanna add just a little bit more on top because I can see some discoloration peeking through. But for the most part, that was a really good first layer of coverage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pat softly over those areas that I feel like I need more coverage. I'm not going to drag the brush, just patting it in. And we are definitely achieving full. Now looking at this product description, it doesn't make any claims about whether or not this is supposed to be a long lasting foundation. And just compared to the other really hot drugstore foundation right now, the Infallible Cream Foundation, I was sort of expecting this to be comparable because that one did last me all day and looked great. So that's sort of what I'm holding this up to for reference. So I don't feel like I need to add any more product. I don't feel like it needs any more blending really. This was really easy to apply and quick to get the final results. As far as the finish, I would agree with the soft matte description. There is maybe the slightest bit of radiance that just looks like natural skin, but for the most part, there is just a soft powder look to it. The only place that I'm a little bit nervous about is my nose. It's a little bit hot today, like in this room right now, in front of these lights, I already sort of feel like I'm sweating and I'm starting <laughs> to already see a little bit of unevenness on my nose. So I'm just gonna go back in and tap and blend. I'm not gonna set this with anything because when you think of 
cream to powder. I feel like it'd be redundant to put powder over it. And y'all know that with my wear tests, I don't typically set the product that I'm testing because I wanna see how it does without any other help. Okay, I just finished the rest of my makeup. I'm really happy to report that the powders that I used to finish the look, so my bronzer, blush, and highlight, they all applied really evenly over the foundation. Now I do wanna zoom you in even closer so you can get a better look at this before. As you can see, it's looking pretty smooth. Again, the nose is a little precarious. <laughs> that is the only spot on my face that looks just slightly less even. So I will definitely be monitoring that throughout the day. So I'm gonna go about my day and I will check back in with you a little later to see how the Milani Cream to Powder Foundation is holding up. Checking in, it's been four hours since I put this foundation on and I'm a little spooked with how this is going. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this on camera, but there's a spot on my nose that I scratched at earlier and it like left imprints in the foundation. And in general, it just seems like the makeup is sitting on top of my skin and it is very, very easily disturbed at this point. Like even if I just kind of go in with a finger to rub at, you know, an itch or something, it totally takes the makeup off really easily. So definitely not transfer proof and I wouldn't call this long lasting either at this point. I'm also seeing a little bit of breakdown around my raised blemishes. It's not awful, it just looks a little bit like the foundation is separating around them slightly. And I am definitely getting noticeable settling in my laugh lines. I don't, however, have any settling or any type of visible wear on my forehead, which is a little bit surprising considering that's one of my oilier areas. I am oily in my T-zone. So as someone with combo skin, I'm not 100% convinced that this foundation is for me yet, but I'm gonna keep trucking along and I will check back in with you at the end of the day. It's been a full eight hours since I put this foundation on and I'll just come out and say it, I don't think that we work well together. In fact, it looks like this foundation is actively trying to escape my face. Now I wanna correct something that I said earlier in this video because I went to the actual Milani website and the description is a bit different from the Ulta website and it says that this formula is supposed to control oil and shine for up to 16 hours. They call it a long wear formula that claims to be sweat proof and waterproof. Let's just zoom you in. So as I mentioned earlier, around the three to four hour mark, I just noticed that the foundation looked like it was slightly separating and just sitting on top of my skin. And that has continued throughout the next four hours, especially around my nose and the nostril area, arguably my most oily spot on my face. I can definitely see a little bit of shine, but the more concerning part is that the foundation is just breaking up. It is slipping and sliding around my nose. It's looking patchy. I'm experiencing the same kind of wear a little bit on my chin, on my upper lip. Surprisingly, the forehead looks okay. I don't know how it escaped the fate of this foundation, but it actually looks pretty even and smooth still up here. And at this point, the slightest touch will pick up a ton of product. It is not transfer proof at all. I was brushing away a mascara flake earlier and left like an empty spot and I kind of had to pat it back into place. The foundation settled in my laugh lines first and then it migrated away, leaving my laugh lines bare and looking just kind of cracked. But on the left side of my face, which is probably the most normal area right now, there are no blemishes, it's not oily over here once you get past my nose region, over here, the foundation looks great. The makeup on top of the foundation looks great and it's still looking smooth and there's no breakup or wear. So I find it really bizarre that this performed so poorly over my oily areas considering the brand is marketing this foundation to people who want oil control. If you do have very normal skin, maybe leaning dry, I could see this working better for you. I mean, I can't deny the coverage is phenomenal and it did stay feeling comfortable throughout the day. Despite it having a powder finish, it never felt dry. But I just cannot <laughs> with how my face looks as a whole right now. It's a no for me, dog. So 
So have you tried this foundation yet and what was your experience with it? Let me know in the comments below. Today's shout out goes to Draculoria. Thanks for being a member of the Slashed Squad. And join me over in this video next where I compare drugstore mini eyeshadow palettes from Wet n Wild and Elf to see which one's better. I'll see you over there. Bye.